In this video, we're going to show you how to use the new social group functionality within .NET Nuke 6.2. Essentially, how to get started with that new functionality. So here we have a .NET Nuke 6.2 Professional Edition website. Now you can do this within .NET Nuke Professional, Enterprise, or Community Editions. We're going to go ahead and log into the website as the administrator of the website. And once we log into that website, we're going to go ahead and create a new page called Community. I'm going to do that by mousing over the Pages menu in the Control Panel. Type in the name of the page. We're going to choose the blank template instead of the default template. That will essentially create a blank page for us. And then I'm going to make sure that page gets inserted after the News and Promotions page within our Awesome Cycles website. I'll go ahead and click on Add Page, and that will create that new page for us. So now that we have the page created, we want to go ahead and place the Social Groups module on the page. We're going to mouse over the Modules menu in the Control Panel, choose the All Categories category, and then choose the Social Groups module. Now from there, we're not going to configure any of the other options. We're just going to click Add Module to add the module to the page. Now you can see here we've set up the page. We now have the module on the page, and the module prompts us to use an Auto Configure option. If you want to go through and have .NET Nuke automatically configure the module for you, that's our recommended approach. What that will actually do is create a child page within the community page, and it's going to place the group view on that child page. So the community page will be a list of all of the groups on our website, where the child page will then display those individual groups once they've been created. So we can simply click on the Auto Configure button, and that will go through and configure that information. Now from here we have a couple more things we need to do before we can really utilize the social groups functionality. The first thing I'm going to go ahead and do is change the permissions on this community page. Out of the box when we created the page the permissions are defaulting to be only visible to administrators. And that's why we have this box here that says visible by administrators only. So we're going to go into the pages menu. We're going to choose the page settings. When you're on the community tab and here from the page settings we're going to navigate to the permissions tab we're going to check the view column for all users we'll go ahead and click on update page that will apply the permissions to the community page we also want to apply those permissions down to the child page we can do that once again within the pages menu there is a copy permissions to children option we'll go ahead and select that click on yes and the page permissions will be propagated from community down to that child page. Now that child page is not visible within the menu. It's only going to be visible to us once we start creating some groups. So let's go ahead and create our first social group. We're going to do that by clicking on the Create Group button on the far right. And here we can go ahead and type in the information for the group. Now we're going to create a group called Customers. Customers of our Awesome Cycles website. So I'll go ahead and provide a description for that group as well. We could also associate a group picture with the group if we'd like to. We could choose a file, have that uploaded from our local computer. Then we can control who can see the group. Is it public? Anyone can see and join? Or is it private, meaning only members can see it? Now, private groups are, utilize security roles. Actually, public groups, groups do as well. But a private group, you would have to add users into the group before they would be able to see that group. Public means anyone who has an account on our website is going to be able to join this group. And at the bottom, we'll go ahead and click on Create Group. So that will create our first group, and it actually takes us to the Group Activity page, which is a child page of community. So we've created a new group called Customers. We see the title here. We see our description. We also have a journal module here on the page. Now it shows kind of recent activity for the group. Currently, that activity includes just the creation of the group by the administrator account. We could like or comment on that functionality. We can also post new information into the activity feed. Over on the right side, we can see a list of members within the group. We can see the administrator account is a member of the group, as that's the account that created the group. Now, with additional accounts or different users, we could actually come in and join that group, and we'll do that in future videos. You'll also notice we have a notification up in the user area within our website. So we'll go ahead and click on that. And within the notifications window, we can see the notification that the customers group was created, provide some of the basic information, and who created that group. 
So that's a quick introduction to the social groups module within .NET Nuke. If we were to navigate back to the community page, you would see the list of the groups. Currently, there's only one group. We could go ahead and create additional groups to be part of our website as well.